An empowered mindset means that you make conscious choices followed by intentional actions to take control of your life. It means you take responsibility for creating the life you want and you leave victimhood in the past. But how exactly do you do that? Well, this is a special two part episode because I've got so much great stuff to share. I had to divide it into two. In today's episode, I'll be outlining four of the five steps I want you to take to have a new mindset filled with happiness, ease, and empowerment. Then next week, you'll hear that fifth step to help you move into 2024 feeling confident and ready. So stay tuned. Welcome back to the podcast. Hello, Dr. Abby Metcalf here. And ooh, we've got a big two-parter coming for you, so I'm excited. Now, in the last broadcast, episode uh, 268, the number one reason why you don't hold your boundaries, I explained how having a victim mindset was holding you back from the happiness you want in your life. And as synchronicity and you know, the gods would have it, a wonderful person DM'd me on, I think it was Instagram, asking if I could do something about how to be empowered. And I thought, what a perfect way to start 2024. So my last episode in 2023 told you to, you know, to get out of that victim mentality. And now I'll give you more specific steps to make that happen. So you got, I, I'm very excited about it. And I realized as I was, you know, me, I was researching and writing and, uh, it just got so long. I thought this is going to be a two hour broadcast. And, um, I know some of you would love that because you've written it and told me you would, but uh, for me, it's a long time to talk and keep my energy up. And so I like to um, divide things up when they get over an hour. Um, plus, I think there's a lot of people who don't want to listen for that long. For those of you who are listening and would like me to talk faster, um, <laughs> even than I do, which is fast, you can listen at 1.5 speed if you haven't already figured that out, if you're um, listening uh, to, you know, on Spotify or Apple or something else. So, uh, just, I do want to say that if you're watching me on YouTube, hello, you're looking at my fabulous, snuggly, fab, good blue sweater. One of my favorites, please like, uh, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps more people find us. We've been growing YouTube. It's been really fun. I love, and I love your comments there. I look and I get the comment back. It's very hard in other places on Spotify. I haven't figured out. Some of you have left beautiful things and I can't figure out how to respond. So if someone knows, if you could send me an email, it'd really help. Um, anyway, but I see them, I see them all and your beautiful reviews of the podcast. Thank you, thank you. I, the last reviews were so lovely. And what we do, just so you know, is we make social media posts about them, of your these incredible things you write. I can't tell you how much I appreciate the love. We post those on social media, uh, so you get a shout out there. I. Don't do all the individual ones here on the episode, but just know I read every single one and they fill my heart with joy and love and all the things, all the feels, all the feels. And you know, you know me, I start crying. That's what happens. I start crying. It, it feels really, really good. So thank you. Really appreciate it. Please um, keep leaving reviews or rate on Spotify. Um, even a one line does it. So I think there was a couple one liners. So I was like, brilliant, five stars, one line, you know, given the best. So, all right, what exactly is an empowered mindset? Now, and it, uh, okay, your mindset, very simply put, is the beliefs that you hold. And beliefs are just thoughts you've had over and over. It's the thoughts you've repeated throughout the years and they end up being things you believe. You end up, you then end up with habitual thoughts, which culminate really in your general attitude, your values, you know, your worldview, your mindset determines how you'll interpret things. And this is so important to understand your mindset will will be what's at the core of how you interpret things that happen in your environment and how you'll then respond to those interpretations. I know you like to think that, well, it's a fact. So, so-and-so said X and it's a fact. It's an interpretation that you have. So, so many of my clients 
I'll be in session and they'll say, um, oh, he, you know, oh, he said this thing and he was being this way and that way. And I'm like, that is your interpretation of what this person was saying. That you do not have proof that that's all the things that they thought when they said it. This idea that you can read other people's minds, it makes me a little crazy. I, I want to smack you around a little. I say with love, you gotta, gotta stop. You are interpreting things and then you, your mindset again, tells you how you'll respond to those interpretations. And in fact, you know what? I'm gonna give you a quick tip right here. Right here, I just thought, because it's something I just said to a client the other day. When something happens you don't like, I'd like you to start saying to yourself, the story I tell myself about that is. So when, when my husband told me that he didn't um, like how the front yard looked and I'm the one who takes care of the yard. I, or that he loved, I, this is, this actually happened. I had a husband who told his wife that he, he was really admiring the neighbors, how they had done landscaped their front lawn. And my client, the wife is the person in charge of landscaping the hat. Like she does all landscaping and she, and she loves it. She really enjoys it. And she does all the gardening and stuff. So when he said, oh my God, the Joneses house looks amazing. I love their landscaping. She took it as a criticism of hers. <laughs> and so I had her do this. And again, she had to say, oh, the story I tell myself about my husband commenting on somebody else is that he's criticizing me uh, and that he doesn't like what I do and that I'm worthless. And I mean, she went down the road. I can't even tell you that he, practically too, he wants to divorce me. It was unbelievable. Um, but these, these are the stories we tell and that's all that that is. So that's a great trick. That's not even one of the tips today. All right. So you can think of a mindset, uh, for yourself as your, uh, your outlook, your values, uh, your frame of mind, your, your general philosophy. And when you have an empowered mindset, it means you believe you control your life. And as much as we control anything, of course, but it means you create your goals and believe you can accomplish them or get the things you want, you know, step by step, I can make these things happen. And people with an empowered mindset are confident, but also curious. So I'm gonna be really clear about this. I have never seen an empowered mindset is not a cocky mindset. It is not a overly confident mindset. There is a confidence there, but there's also this tremendous curiosity when you're uh, talking to people or having a conversation, they have a wonderfully realistic view of their strengths and their limitations, but realistic. They don't generalize, they don't catastrophize, but they always lead with their strengths. You don't wanna lead, you wanna lead with your strengths always. And having an empowered mindset means you do that. It doesn't mean you ignore or don't think you don't have limitations or things you're not good at, <laughs> Oh, excuse me, little hiccup. You just understand that your leading with your strengths is the only way to go. And it's the truth. People with an empowered mindset, they really believe that they make things happen and that everything is figure outable. And there's a, a healthy sense of self-worth. They act from that place. And I want to be clear that this isn't about, you know, positive thinking or toxic positivity or any of that crap. It's about a frame of reference within yourself that you can trust. There's a sense of self-efficacy, um, you know, which basically means that you have a belief in your abilities to achieve the goals you've set. That's what self-efficacy is. So where do I want to go? Okay, wait. So let me say a few notes first. Okay, before I jump in, I want to be clear that there's a road to an empowered mindset, but there's no magic bullet. It, it's about consistent practice in specific areas. I want to say that first. Okay. Just before we go on, you know, be really clear. The other thing I want to say that is if you do a search online as I did, so what I always do, I've said this before is when I'm um, writing up a podcast, I first write down everything I think and know about a topic. That's what I do. I go through, I look through my own res, you know, research I've done myself. I look through, you know, maybe even a past episode I've done, not usually, but mostly I just sit and I think, 
what do I think about this topic? Like empowerment. And I thought of all the things I knew. And then I go, that's my rough outline. And then I go research. Then I go in and see what other people say about an empowered mindset. Because I always want things to be, I don't want to be a regurgitation of a bunch of stuff on the internet. You know what I mean? I, I want, you, you want my experience, you know, my 40 years working with people in all the different environments I've worked in around the world, you know, across the United States and in other countries. You, you know, you want that. And that's what I give you. But then I, of course, I want to hear what other people say. And some, of course, of what's already been informed with me about a topic is research I've previously done on, you know, books I've read or research articles I've read. So again, but then I go and do a fresh look. And what I, if you do the same thing, if you look up Empowered Mindset, you know, do a little search online, you're going to see a lot of people saying that to have an empowered mindset, you should make sure you're surrounded by positive people. And I need to tell you that I hate this. When I don't hate, sorry. I dislike this greatly. This pisses me off. This upsets me when I see it. Because when I see this kind of advice, it's, to me, that's a victim mentality. The, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, so yes, of course, it's wonderful to have positive, up, uplifting people around us. And I hope you have many people in your life like this. But the vast majority of people also have a mother who's driving them crazy with her complaining and, uh, and negativity or, co or coworkers or a boss who are argumentative or critical or grumpy a lot. And if you hear that to have a positive, empowered mindset, excuse me, an empowered mindset, you have to, you know, be around empowering people that for, it's taking all the power out of you and putting it on all those around you and you get to act like a victim. Oh, well, I can't quit my job or I'm not going to cut off my mom or I can't change my relationship because my partner won't change and they're negative. And that is a load of crap. So I want to be really clear when you read that stuff, it is not, I'm not saying that again. Yes. You know, it's good. If you want to get good at creating healthy boundaries with the folks that drive you crazy or figure out how to let go of toxic relationships, go buy my new book, Boundaries Made Easy, Your Roadmap to Connection, Ease and Joy. Uh -huh. Oh, it's, it's, if you're watching on video, it's right behind me here. I did an audiobook version of it so you can listen to me boss you around <laughs> instead of reading about me bossing you around. You can listen if you'd prefer that to my voice. But let me unequivocally say that you can absolutely have an empowered mindset even if the people around you are negative. This is about you being, what do I talk about all the time? The dominant vibration in the room. This is about you having this empowered mindset, even, especially when it's hard. And way, way back in episode 113, The Secret to Positive Thinking, I go deep on how to be that dominant vibration in the room and have others calibrate or sync up with your healthier mindset instead of you syncing up to their negative one. And of course, I will link to it in the show notes and in the uh, blog. You can find a blog for all of the uh, episodes on my, web, pretty much all, I would say 99%, except the Ask Dr. Abby's. I don't do a blog, but all the rest I do. And I write up a really specific, a good blog. It's a really good article that you can then use for notes later. If you're listening to the podcast and you're like, what did she say? What was that about that? Go back and look, go search on the website for the same episode and you'll have all the notes. You can copy and paste all the notes. You can do whatever you want. It really, I do this because I love you and I want to make it really easy for you to get the information. Right. So yeah, you can buy my book. That's great. It's a great way to support me and a great way to support yourself, frankly. But you can, if you don't have a penny, you can be here and really change your life. And I say it all the time and I mean it. And if you've been with me for a while, you know it. So it, it's so important that you get out of this idea that the people around you are the reason you're upset or sad or not empowered. Cause that is fucking bullshit. It drives me crazy. Yes, I'm swearing because it really drives me crazy. And I'm sorry because I know that uh, there's a little girl named Martha in, I think, Germany who listens to me who's like 11. So Martha, this is not English. You, they, she and her mom <laughs> uh, 
practice their English listening to my podcast. So, uh, and they've written to me many times that I love you guys. Um, so I apologize for that for you, little Martha. Okay. But everybody else. Yeah. I, that's how strongly I feel about this. It, why is it always assumed that a negative mindset should trump a positive one? What, 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 why is that the thing? Well, I was in a good mood and then my, my partner came home in a bad mood. So now I'm in a bad mood. Screw that. Screw that. You, if someone comes home in a bad mood, get them into your good mood. No, no. Well, don't get them, you know, just stay, stay in your good mood. But guess what starts to happen? People start to come over. They're, they're not, we're not getting sucked into what they're doing. I have a great, a free video on YouTube, which again, I'll link to Why am I, sorry, I'm burping a little. I don't know. I don't know what that is, but you know, I don't edit that stuff out. So it's okay. Uh, <laughs> there's a free video on YouTube. Uh, it's a calibration exercise that you can download. And I want to say just really quickly, I want to give a shout out that, you know, I follow the work of Abraham and Esther Hicks. And, um, if you don't know who they are, you can go look them up. They've, there's a million videos around them. Uh, it, they're my spiritual teachers in a lot of ways. I have a lot, I have many spiritual teachers, but they are included there. And some of the concepts I'm going to talk about today are definitely, um, from, Again, my learning from them over the, since, uh, gosh, I've been, I've been sort of following for lack of a better term since 1986, uh, their work and their teachings. So it's, it's been, it's been a few decades. Uh, so there's so much that's just part of my vernacular, part of how I speak, part of how I present. And I, 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 I'm not trying to co-op their work. I'm, I just, I realize that so much of it is just how I talk now. Um, after all these years, but I do want to give shout outs. And if I ever forget to give a shout out, just please know that that is not on purpose. And that is not me trying to, you know, own something that's not mine. Um, however, how I translate, uh, decipher, um, you know, extrapolate their information is my own, you know, the way that I, I always say, I kind of interpret for them to, so that people, you know, kind of the rest of us can understand, you know, these important teachings, but this idea of calibrating is absolutely from them. And, um, I did the video off of one of the exercises that Esther Hicks does, which I love. So, uh, anyway, that's, that's there it's on YouTube, you know, and all the stuff on YouTube, you know, just go listen. It's free. Obviously don't spend a penny again. I also want to say that Another common suggestion that I see when you look up on the internet, how to have an empowered mindset is that they always say, oh, you have to eat well and exercise. Well, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Of course, doing those things will absolutely help you have a more empowered mindset, but I don't know about you, but for me, it's hard to eat right and exercise when I don't have an empowered mindset. So it's like this evil catch 22. So my steps, the five steps I have to empower mindset do not include any of those things, eating well, getting rid of people, uh, exercising, none of that. So, and I will tell you in my experience, once you're in a good place consistently, once you start really having an empowered mindset, it's so much easier to add healthier foods to get out there and get some exercise or movement a few times a week. Believe it or not, you know, once you're in a better place, those things feel more doable. They feel more achievable and occasionally you're even motivated. <laughs> so for now, that's not where I want you to focus. That's not my five, my five steps. So let's get to it. These are the, they're going to be four of the five, but I'm going to tell you what the fifth step is today. Uh, my five steps to having an empowered mindset. So step one is you have to have to start your day right. And again, before I go deep here, I went deep on this topic back in episode 204, Abby's step-by-step -step guide to starting your day right. Again, I'll link to it in the show notes. You can do a keyword search. You can just search those, you know, that, that, that title, sign keywords, that title on YouTube, on, you know, anywhere you listen to the podcast and you will find it. Or again, come on over to the website, abbymetcalf.com and look up that, you know, the show notes for today's episode or the blog post, and you will find all the links. But, uh, I mean, 
And I got granular, like nitty gritty and laid out the exact steps you should take each morning. I'm talking about you wake up, you turn off the alarm, you put your feet on the floor. Like, I mean like that nitty gritty step by step. So it's really all there, how to start the day empowered. So I'm not going to repeat myself too much here. I, re I really, I feel like you should just go listen to that. Um, or read again, you can just read if you feel like you don't want to listen to the whole episode. However, I do want to say a few things right now. Okay. The reason you need to put a huge focus on how you start your day, if you want to have an empowered mindset is because of momentum. And this is another, uh, the way I talk about it is, is, is yet another nod to Esther and, and really Jerry Hicks and, uh, Abraham. But again, this is how I talk about it. So as I've mentioned before, I want you to imagine that you have a car on top of a hill and that's you starting your day. That's you first thing when you wake up. And what generally happens is that the car starts rolling down that hill right away. You hit the snooze button 10 times. Your first thoughts are that, you know, you didn't get enough sleep. You're so tired or you're beating yourself up for not getting to bed on time the night before. Maybe you're already running late and rushing around. You're just dying for caffeine that you can't live without. This is literally the equivalent of laying in bed, smoking a pack of cigarettes, eating a box of donuts, and then thinking, oh, I'm going to have a productive, great day. It, it's, it's so bad. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It doesn't happen for anyone this way. You've got to keep that car on top of that hill. So that means you need to guard that momentum and keep positive momentum moving as opposed to negative. That's when the car, you know, rolls down that huge hill and it gains momentum all day until it's four o'clock and you realize you've been rushing around all day reacting, not acting. And now you're exhausted and you just want to eat food you shouldn't or have a nice big drink or a big fat joint or whatever else you do. That car has rushed to the bottom of the hill and it's, it crushed you. And now, and you're thinking you're going to have an empowered mindset again, not going to happen. So researchers at the university of tier Germany found that we get stressed right at the beginning of our day just by waking up. Again, I linked to all the research on the show notes page and the website. Within minutes of waking up in the morning, you release a bunch of stress hormones because you start thinking of the day you have ahead, uh, you know, which triggers that fight, flight, or freeze response. I, you know, I've talked about a million times. This in turn releases stress hormones like cortisol into your bloodstream. I know you can imagine right, right when you wake up. So to combat this, you want to start your day with very consciously directed positive thoughts and feelings. And remember you feel the way you think. So it's really about having a good thought there that's going to help you start the day. You want to get that positive, empowered mindset momentum going. Okay. And there's things you should not do. There's things not to do. So first of all, don't stay up past your bedtime the night before. I say a lot that your day doesn't start when your alarm goes off. Your day starts when you set your alarm the night before. You're not going to feel empowered all day when you've had a crappy night's sleep. Make it your top priority to stick to a reasonable bedtime for a month. Just try for a month. I'm telling you, change your life. Number two, don't hit the snooze button. This is crucial. And I'm going to get you some quick reasons why I've mentioned these reasons before they bear repeating again, snoozing ruins. The first problem is that when you hit the snooze button, it ruins the behavioral conditioning between the stimulus, which is your alarm and your response, which is getting your ass out of bed. If you were to get out of bed, the first time the alarm goes off, it would eventually become an automatic response and the struggle would go away. And I, and I'm telling you from personal experience, absolutely. I used to be a huge snooze alarm person, huge it is it, it completely goes away. I wake up now. If I do wake up to the alarm, I usually wake up before it. But if I do, um, I, I just, I'm up. The second problem is that that morning alarm struggle has lasting effects on your day because of something called sleep inertia grogginess, which leaves you weak and struggling to perform really even basic tasks. Studies have found that sleep inertia can take two, get this, 
two to four hours to shake, even if you feel fully alert. And Robert Rosenberg, I hope that's his name, I'm pretty sure. He's the medical director or was of the Sleep Disorder Center of Prescott Valley and Flagstaff in Arizona. He says that if you snooze and start to fall back asleep after your first alarm, you're, what's happening is your body gears up for another full cycle of sleep. So when that second alarm jerks you awake during the beginning of your next sleep cycle, that incomplete cycle, that's what leaves you with this worse slurp, sleep inertia, slurp, sleep inertia. And again, you end up with this sleep and grogginess residue, which makes you more tired for hours and hours. And of course, then you're likely to crave coffee or sugar for half your day just to get yourself moving. That in turn affects your nighttime rest. And you can see, I don't, right? There's a really nasty cycle in place here, which we hate. And I will say that lastly, and I have to itch my nose, sorry, that my last issue with the, and probably really my biggest, I would say, issue with hitting the snooze button if, is that this is your first commitment of the friggin' day and you're not keeping it. Cause you know, it's only a commitment to yourself. So why bother, right? Who are you? You don't matter. No, no. Yes, you do. Making a commitment to yourself matters. You're starting. And when you do that, you're starting your day with these thoughts of it's not enough. I didn't get enough. It's not enough. That is no way to start an empowered day. There's enough. You're okay. You know, you are, you don't want to start your day with, I didn't get enough as your first thought. So from a psychological, from a physiological perspective, get your cute, sweet, beautiful tushy out of bed as soon as you hear the alarm. I guarantee you, yeah, yeah, I said it. I said guarantee that you will feel better, more alert, and never want to hit the snooze again if you do this for just two weeks straight. And I, I, every single person, every single, every single Every single person, did I say every single person? Tells me my clients, people I've, you know, people who write in, who've listened to me say this before, just say, I cannot believe how, how, how different I feel doing this. It is so key to having an empowered mindset this morning. If you do nothing else but this morning piece, you will be on your way to having a much, you, at least having an empowered mindset in the morning. I'll tell you that right now. Because you have to make yourself a priority every single day you come first and it can just be a few minutes but you're setting yourself up to start the day in a positive frame so setting up a morning ritual that puts you first is the most critical part of your day this is the way to stay ahead of the negative momentum and as part of any morning routine and again you can do as little as 10 minutes to start I'd love for you to keep just a separate notebook that's part of your morning routine. I sell some very inspirational notebooks on my website if you'd like to get one. Uh, <laughs> or, you know, go to Target and get one. I don't, you know, or your local whatever store and get one. Although, again, mine are cuter, but just saying. I love, and I do like, get a spiral notebook. I know that some of those notebooks that have like the hard binding are really pretty, but they're harder to keep open when you're writing in them. If you love them, do it. The ones I sell on my website are all spiral because those, the, the hardcover, the hard-sided ones make me, they're like more like a book. Uh, I don't like to write in. But anyway, uh, but keep this separate notebook. I'd really like you to do that. And again, that you actually write in. We And keep track of things like your abilities, your strengths. You can read those over at another time. Um, take a moment and recognize what I'd love for you to do every morning maybe in that for two of the 10 minutes is to take a moment and recognize what you did well or, you know, what you followed through on in the day before. So, you know, you're noticing your abilities and the power to change your circumstances. That is really how to be an, emp an empowered place. So I want to say that. Step two is a don't. You know, I usually only have do's, but this is a don't. You don't, I say don't crave, C-R-A-V-E, which is an acronym. So, okay, so you know, now you've started your day with your intentional, empowered mindset, but you've got to stay on top of your thinking throughout the day to keep that car on top of the hill. <laughs> Don't allow negative momentum, right, to start picking up speed. And I have written 
a ton and I've talked a ton about how to be mindful. And if you haven't already, you should absolutely download my free mindfulness starter kit. And, but there are five specific, <laughs> there are five specific things I want you to watch out for, which you can only do if you're mindfully in your moments. So again, you've got to work on your mindfulness, but, and there's five things, the C-R-A-V-E that I, you know, that you can remember that way to, to watch out for, to help you keep an empowered mindset throughout the day. Cause you know, you can start your day great, but if you don't keep it going, right, it's, it's really the key. And again, the acronym, you know, I like giving you little jingles to remember. So I use CRAVE, C-R-A-V-E. So number one is the C is for don't criticize or complain or allow yourself to be around others who are doing it. You cannot have an empowered mindset if you're criticizing others, it's not empowering, or complaining about things because you're acting like a victim, right? It's, it's not, there's nothing empowering about it. And if you allow others to do it with you, what, how draining is that when people are complaining to you or criticizing you? It, it's, it's, it, it's no bueno. I'll tell you that right now. The R is for resentment. If you're feeling resentful of anyone or anything, you're giving the control of your life over to that person or thing. And there is no way to have an empowered mindset when you're steeped in resentment. And I did an entire, uh, you know, I'll link to the episodes, but I've done entire episodes on resentment. There's a whole chapter in my book about how to let go of resentments. Um, I know I do everything in that book. I'm just saying, uh, but you know, you hear, you, do you hear me? Do you, are you picking up what I'm laying down? All right. The A is for not attacking others or blaming them for anything that's happening in your life. And again, not allowing others to attack or blame you. And again, if this is difficult for you, you know what I'm going to say, get a copy of my book, Boundaries Made Easy, Your Roadmap to Connection, Ease and Joy. Uh, or again, or just do a keyword, a keyword search on my website for boundaries and give yourself a mini course. You don't, you don't, again, you can do it for free. If you want to do it for free, I always want to make sure things are accessible uh, to people who don't have any money so that, you know, that's how I started this. And that's how I will finish this podcast. You know, the, the, if, if that ever stops happening, I will no longer be doing the podcast. So, uh, the book is really has, you know, more in it, obviously, but it's, it's really all the information in one place in like a step-by-step -step format so that you, you know, you can sort of get it all together as opposed to, you know, all the little pieces and having to go find them, you know, breadcrumbs everywhere, but you can go find them if you are so uh, motivated. And I have no issue with that at all. It's why it's there. It's why I write the blog posts. It's why I have it there for you. Um, okay. So you can do the mini course or buy my book, but any of those are going to help you with, with really all of Crave. But the V means don't act like a victim in anything. End of. And don't let anyone say that you're victimizing them right? Again, no empowerment there at all, obviously. And the E of crave means that you need to watch for any feelings of entitlement, that you're owed something that, you know, it should happen a certain way again. And if anyone's doing it to you, it, I would say that in the end of it all, it's about only focusing on what you can control, not what you can't. And you can't control anyone else's behavior, but you can control yours. You can control your complaining, your attacking, you're acting like a victim, you're acting entitled, right? You can control your resentment. You can control your side of crave for sure. And you can't, although you can't control other people doing crave to you, you can, you do have control of your boundaries and making those very clear. Okay. Making those very clear. All right. Step three is loving kindness. You having an empowered mindset is so much easier when you're not filled with hate, resentment, or frustration for yourself or for anyone else. And the relief you'll feel when these feelings aren't omnipresent will literally change your life. I'm telling you, I've seen it thousands of times now. There's a lot of great research about the benefits of loving kindness meditations. I speak about those in other, um, in other episodes, especially the episode I did on meditation, uh, which again, you can search for and I'll link to, I have a meditation album. If you want to learn how to meditate, there's a, it, it, 
it's a step-by-step -step guide how to learning how to meditate for 15 minutes in just 15 days if you want to do that but loving kindness meditation is different than regular meditation it's a very specific basically loving guide, kindness meditations are basically guided meditations and again i can't recommend them highly enough there's a lot of great research. I'll link to some of it on in the show notes and on the blog post, but I have a free loving kindness guided meditation on YouTube. And who doesn't want to listen to my voice more that you can listen to anytime. It's free. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally free. You don't have to put your email in nothing. It's right there. You can go get it anytime you want, but there's a ton of loving kindness meditations and the mine is based on the research. There's a certain script that you use that the research has studied. And I, I do use that script. So I would really highly recommend that you practice that two to three times a week for one month. I'm telling you, you will absolutely notice some huge changes in how you feel every day and with your ability to maintain that empowered mindset. I will also tell you that I, and a lot of comments, if you look, if you look up my loving kindness meditation on YouTube, you'll see it happens to me too. I often start crying when I'm, I know you're like, Abby, you cried anything. Shut up, Abby. <laughs> But people also, other people write it too. They're like, oh my God, I teared up at part of this because it, it's, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. It goes right to the heart, people. All right. Step four, you got to set reasonable goals. I, sh oh, 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 <laughs> like, why are you making noises, Abby? <sighs> I'm taking a breath because you don't set reasonable goals very often. It makes me crazy. And then you get upset that you didn't reach them during the day. And then you feel like a loser and you generalize and you catastrophize and you don't need to because your goals sucked. They sucked. They were bad, bad goals, bad goals. You, you really didn't set reasonable intentions or goals for the day. And then you're upset that you didn't get them. Well, they weren't reasonable. It is one of the quickest ways to lose an empowered mindset is to set goals that cannot be reached for the day or to have really, or to have set no real goals besides getting through your to-do list, which really is your goals. A to-do list is your goals and you're missing, you're, you're missing that. And to-do lists are the worst when it comes to having an empowered mindset. But I mean, they, they suck, they suck your soul because you don't get through everything on your to-do list ever, ever, unless you're one of those wonderful people who've done things where you write three things for the day that you know you can do, like showering, eating a healthy breakfast, and then whatever else, right? Or like one thing at work. That's great. If that, those are reasonable goals. Uh, so that's okay with me. But for the vast majority of you listening, you're not setting reasonable goals, even though you think you are. And I will tell you that instead, I've talked about this before, I'm gonna talk about it again. I want you to throw away your to-do list and never have one again, and instead to schedule, scheduling. I'm gonna explain in a minute. So you know that list you've been writing and rewriting for the last six months? <laughs> Maybe it's only one month. You know you've had clean the garage, make an appointment with the dentist for the root canal on that list for months. You know what I'm talking about. I see you, I see you. And you know that how you never actually cleaned the garage or you haven't yet made that damn appointment for the root canal, but you've gotten really good at writing down that you're gonna clean the garage and that you're gonna call the dentist. Yeah, well, that needs to change. And I want you to think of, again, never writing a to-do list again. Instead, you wanna schedule in everything that was on your list and actually get it done. So what happens is something like clean the garage is now on your schedule for May 15th from nine to 12. Yeah, maybe that's five months from now, but so what? That's the only time you really have to get it done anyway. And you know the best part, other than the fact that you're now being realistic about when you can really get this job done, the best part is not seeing this on your to-do list every day and feeling sh bad because you're not doing it yet again. Again, psychologically, not having to-do lists is so good for your soul. And I know people like them. I used to like them. I used to have them all the time. I now make sure that I do during the day, write down, you know, things come up during the day. Oh, remember this, remember that. Sometimes during the podcast, I make a note of something I have to remember to do, but I make sure 
that those things, if I can't do them immediately, you know, like right after the podcast, if I can't do it right in that second, I make sure that I take anything on a sticky or a list and put it in my actual schedule for during the week. So let me, I'm going to give you a quick example. The pod, this podcast, when I was first doing it in the very beginning, because I love to research, as you know, and read, they were taking me like seven hours <laughs> for one podcast. And you know, I just don't have that. I, I would not still be here today doing these podcast, doing these episodes if they were continuing to take me seven hours to do one because that's too long. I don't have that kind of time. I would have burnt myself out. You would be getting a, you wouldn't be getting a podcast every week. I'll tell you that. Uh, sometimes they were taking even longer than seven hours if I was honest, because I would keep going back and doing them more and more. So now what I do is I schedule, I look at my schedule, you know, like I schedule clients, right? I schedule my clients. I schedule, you do it. If you schedule your meetings at work or whatever, or you, whatever you have, you do schedule some things going to the dentist at a certain time on Monday at two, it's scheduled, right? I'm talking about scheduling everything. So from my podcast, I, I have, there's three hours that I use for each podcast, one hour to research. Well, I write first, right? So I do one hour. I, I don't do an hour of writing. I do about a half hour of writing. You know, I write down everything I can think of. I put everything into some sort of rough outline. Then I do, an, I have an hour, and I set a timer for this. Do you understand how specific I'm being? I, and, I, and it's in my schedule. Two, two, I generally do it on Mondays is when I do this stuff. So um, I, all my Mondays, I don't see clients. It's a day that's clear, but I still schedule it. So I schedule, let's say from nine to 10 that I'm going to write, um, you know, or nine to 9.30, let's say. I schedule that I'm gonna write. Then the alarm goes off and I stop. Wherever I am, I just stop. I could be in the middle, you know, I, I maybe finish a thought, but that's it. Even if I have more to say, I stop. Then I, I set the timer for another hour and I do research, I'm all over. A lot of times what I do is I set the timer for 50 minutes instead of the hour. And then I set it again for 10 minutes. So I give myself like a 10 minute notice, you know, but now actually I can do an hour cause I sort of have an internal clock that lets me know when I'm getting close. And then whatever I find in an hour is what I find. Uh, if it's, if it's, it doesn't matter. Like there might be more information out there, but I, I, I give myself an hour and then I schedule an hour at another time. Cause I'm sort of, you know, I schedule another half hour to do the, finish the writing now that I've researched, right? So it takes an hour to write, an hour to research all together. And then I schedule another hour when I actually do the broadcast, when I, when I do this, I generally don't do that. You know, that's not going to be three hours in a row because I won't have good energy for you. I won't be all, you know, and I always want to take another minute to reread right before, you know, get myself ready, get myself set up with my camera and um, all my stuff. So, uh, you know, that I schedule in, I actually schedule an hour and 15 minutes uh, to be completely specific. But do you see how specific that is? And it's scheduled. It says from 12 to 115 podcast, you know, like that's what it said, you know, uh, do the, the audio for podcast. That's what it says. And that is in my schedule. So that's how I get things done. What happens a lot is people put things in like work on, if I had work on the podcast, I would, that's what I used to have work on the podcast. That's what was taking me seven up to 10 hours to do. It's too, it's, I don't work on things. I finish things. I, people ask me all the time. Cause you know, I do this. I do my weekly love letter, which I hope you're on the list. If you're not, you can go to the website and just hit love letter and put in your email. It's a once a week inspirational story. That's all it is. I'm not selling things there. I, I mentioned the book or something. Sure. But when I have something new that drops, but in general it's, it's so I don't know, twice a year, I have something new that drops. Uh, I'll mention it or in a PS, but that's not the email that the email is an inspirational story or something to get you thinking, or I don't know, a new set on something. So, uh, that that's what that's about. Does that make sense? You know, anyway, so I do that. I do the blog. I do the podcast. I mean, that's a lot. And I see clients and I, you know, I do lots of other stuff too. And I write my books and I, you know, there's a lot going on, but it gets done because it's scheduled it's scheduled. Just like getting, I got my hair dyed yesterday. Yes, th this is sort of my natural color. Um, 
you know, my nails, whatever. It, they're in the schedule. And phone calls I need to return, all of that. I can't say this enough. And I feel so good at the end of my days because I've done what I said I would do. I've done it. I've gotten it done. And, and so if I have five calls to return, I look and I think, how long will that take me to return those calls? And I schedule it in. So from two to three, I'm making calls. And then I have a list of what those calls are. That's how I do it. What's also nice is that when someone asks me to do something for them, I can look at my schedule and be very clear like, oh, I won't be able to get that done till Friday. I, I have an opening at Friday at two. And sometimes people will push back and go, oh, well, I need that earlier. And I'll say, well, I, I can't do it earlier. If you were doing this at work and your boss is telling you they need something, you can look at your schedule and say, and you can then say to them, what would you like me to get rid of so I can put this in? I, I don't have time. Like right now you told me the priorities were A, B, and C, and I have those all scheduled in to be done by Friday. If you're now giving me another priority, I, I don't, there's like something else would have to go. What would you like that to be? And you're now putting that on your boss instead of you keeping it. Do you see how that works? I know it's a beautiful thing. All right. So, and along with scheduling, I'd like you to incorporate a concept that I, I've mostly heard from motivational speaker, Brian Tracy. Um, I'm going to admit I don't love his politics, so I, I don't always like to uh, give him shout outs, but I need to when there's something good. Um, he, he, something he calls eat the frog. And I don't know if anyone else had come up with this before. Uh, some people say Mark Twain did. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure, but that's the first place I read it. So I'll give him that. Um, <laughs> Basically, this means that eat the frog means that you want to schedule the hardest thing or the item you least want to do at the very beginning of your day. So you want to eat that frog first and get it over with. Otherwise, you know, it sits there and you're dreading it and finding reasons not to do it. If you need to talk to your boss about something first thing in the morning. If, you know, if I need to schedule a uh, time to talk to my tax person, I don't, I, don't uh, I need to do that first thing in the morning, <laughs> you know, uh, or you know what I mean though? Something that is, it, it, oh, I got to schedule the root canal and I haven't been wanting to get it. It's going to be costly. First thing in the morning. It's the first thing I do. Like these are ways and then it's done. It's done. You're so relieved. You feel like such a badass. You, you feel like you could conquer the world at this point because you've finished this one thing. It's, it's why I work out first thing in the morning. I, if I had, if I have all day to think about working out, you better believe I would talk myself out of it and I would never, ever, ever do it. So I know I spent a bit of time on that. And again, I've written about this before, you know, how to get stuff done. Um, but I can't stress enough that it is, it will absolutely change your world when you get rid of to-do lists and start to really schedule in what you can do, what makes sense. You start to see what needs to come off your plate that no human, you cannot bend the space time continuum. No human can get all this done. So l give yourself that room. Even when you're looking at your morning and you're waiting till the very last minute to wake up, you know, I need you to think about your schedule. Like, can I really get done everything I want to get done and have a calm mind if I only give myself 10 minutes to get ready? My, the answer is probably not. So I want you to think about it. All right. And then step five is to cultivate a growth mindset. And as I told you, this is a double secret agent special two part episode. So next week will be all about step number five, which is how to cultivate a growth mindset, which is, I mean, such a key to having an empowered mindset. It is the work of Carol Dweck, the amazing, incredible, I know she sounds like a West Wee Wabbit when I say her name that way, Carol Dweck, but that is her name. Uh, her research is incredible. I've been, had a girl crush on her for the longest time. I've been lucky enough to see her speak a few times. She's amazing. Um, the research is incredible. It's going to, if you haven't heard of it yet, it's going to change your life in a huge way. Uh, growth and fixed mindset and understanding what it is, how to apply it at work, how to apply it with parenting, having empowered parenting, empowered coaching, being an empowered person. I mean, it, it's everywhere. It's incredible. And I can't wait to talk to you about it. So make sure you tune in next week for that. <sighs> that is it for this week. Oh my gosh. I love that we're starting out 2024 together. Of course. I love that we're starting it out with something like this. Thank you for the suggestion again to the person uh, who DM me about it. Um, 
I love your ideas. I, I love when you reach out. I love when you, uh, you know, have me in your story, tag me in your stories on IG and you're wearing one of the shirts I have, go Shannon, or you're, uh, reading my book or I just, I love it all. It really, you know, I sit here alone in my office and I don't feel alone. I really don't. I feel like I'm, look, I'm going to start to cry, but I'm not going to, I, <laughs> I'm going to get through one podcast without crying. Um, it feels so great. I feel so connected to you, even though people are writing me from Australia and Sri Lanka and Great Britain and, you know, all over. And I, I feel, you know, and, and Southern California, you know, and down the street, I, I, I feel like you're here with me. It, it keeps me so motivated and inspired to keep doing this, that we're really creating a loving world at a time when we really need that. We really, really need that. You know, pray, pray for us here in the United States. We, we really, really need that. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a dark time in a lot of ways, in, in, at least in uh, this country, uh, but in a lot of ways in the world uh, with climate change and other things. So, you know, having us be together and feeling empowered and not feeling victimized and disempowered in, this, in these times is really important. So as always, I'm grateful, grateful to be here with you. <clears throat> get it together here. I'm grateful to be here with you. I, uh, so appreciative of our time together and that you're still here with me. Season six, starting out 20, you know, July, we're six months in, we're halfway into season uh, six and I can't think of anywhere I'd rather be right now. All right. I love you so, so much. Have an amazing week and I'll talk to you real soon.